Weston Timmers, Automation Specialist with Werner Electric Supply. Welcome to our Automation Learning Series. In this series, we'll bring you the latest in automation technologies, products, and how-to videos. Uh, today, I'll be showing you a Rockwell software product called Control Flash Plus. So Control Flash Plus is uh, not necessarily replacing the old Control Flash software. It's just an addition to, and we'll have further development as we go forward. Uh, so today, I'll be showing you some of the features in release two of that software. Uh, over here to my right, I've got a piece of demo equipment here. It's got ControlLogic's chassis with a few different modules there, uh, some Ethernet-based I.O., uh, PowerFlex 525 drive, uh, and a Stratix switch. So I'll be showing you how to flash multiple of these devices using the new software. Uh, so moving into the software here, um, first thing that you'll need to do when you load it up is select the path. Uh, that we'll be going out to browse on and do our flashing. Uh, so in this instance, I'll be showing you uh, flashing via Ethernet since most of these devices are connected to, back to my Stratix switch. Um, as you'll see here, I can browse out and discover uh, the modules that are in the Control Logics chassis. I'm also picking up a panel view that's in that demo box. Uh, but what I'll do is I'll highlight this base uh, Ethernet uh, driver essentially here. And there's also a number of levels that you want to browse down. So what that's telling me is it's going to go out and browse uh, these main devices that have uh, IP addresses, right? So that's level one. And then level two is going to be beyond there. So it's going to go down into this back plane and find these secondary modules in this chassis. So with that being said, click OK there. Goes out, browses everything. It's going to identify uh, what modules are out there and then also load up any firmware that we have available for those. Uh, so something that's kind of cool about release two of Control Flash Plus is that uh, it now connects out to the product compatibility and download center. So if you have an internet connection on your computer that you've also got a connection into the plant network, uh, this will actually automatically go out and browse and find what the latest uh, firmware files are for the devices that it finds. So up in this top area here, you can see that uh, I can either flash to the latest of uh, the firmware files that I have local on my computer, or if I change this drop down, it'll pull in all the latest firmware files from the, the PCDC, or Product Compatibility and Download Center. Um, so what I can do here is go through my list. There's check boxes on the left, and then this drop down on the right. And there's a column telling me exactly what firmware is in each of these devices right now, currently. Uh, if I go through this list, uh, looking at my PowerFlex drive, I see that there's a newer version available. This little blue arrow to the right is going to indicate that uh, this is a file from the PCDC, so I don't have this locally, so it'll have to download this file. Uh, not a big issue, it'll do that automatically when I start the firmware flash. Once I've chosen a firmware and I check the box over here on the left, that means that uh, this device is now in the queue to be flashed when I run through the uh, flashing utility. So we just kind of work down through the list. Uh, I'm not going to flash the panel view here, um, but if I come down through, I can see that um, looks like the uh, I.O. device, the I.O. module has the latest already, but just for the heck of it, for demonstration purposes, I'll flash that. Uh, coming down into the Control Logics chassis, it looks like there's updates for both of these modules. So I'll go ahead and choose both of those. And let's just choose a different revision here. I'll go with version 31 for the L73. Uh, so the power, the real power of Control Flash Plus comes from uh, the ability to create a flash list and then flash multiple devices concurrently. So this is going to depend on your network topology. Uh, if you're using a star network, uh, it can flash 20 devices at a time concurrently. Uh, if you're using a device level ring or linear topology, it's going to identify that topology and then go through and flash each one of those devices one at a time so that it doesn't break the ring as it's doing that. So it'll do each one of those one at a time and then it'll go through and flash everything that's in a star topology afterwards. Uh, in my instance, everything here is in a star topology, so it should be able to flash um, all of these devices, all five of these at the same time. Uh, up to 20 at a time I mentioned. So now uh, down in the lower right here, another thing to point out, 
would be the favorites list. Um, so if I'm a machine builder and I'm always using the same set of hardware for each machine, uh, what I can do is actually create a favorites list so that uh, after the fact, or I could share this with somebody else, but for my next piece of hardware or next machine, I can connect up and just choose from my favorites list and it'll, I know that it will flash all the same versions of firmware to that machine as what I used previously. Um, so if you've gone through, you've done your testing and you know that everything functions the way that you expect, uh, you'd probably want to continue using that, those same versions of firmware in your following machines. Um, so very easy from that perspective. So if I go to next here, what that's going to do is uh, just pops up this license agreement because I am going out to download firmware files from the PCDC. I have to accept that. And you'll see here as the progress goes through, it's going through and downloading these couple of files that it needs to first. And so this is also pretty powerful. So uh, previously with Control Flash, you actually had to go out to the website, download the file, install it, and then you could launch Control Flash and go through and flash your devices. Uh, whereas with this one, I can go through and actually uh, do all the downloads and the installing right within the utility and there's no external uh, processes that I have to follow. So we'll let that keep running through. Looks like I had a couple of errors on this one. Um, the reason for these is that they're uh, non, not in the DMK file format, and so that's what Control Flash Plus uses. Uh, so what it's telling me to do is go to the install directory where it downloaded the zip file, uh, install that firmware file manually, and then come back through and run it. Um, so in this instance, I'll just leave those be for now, since I didn't have those uh, downloaded and installed ahead of time. And I'll wait until these finish up, and then we'll run through the flashing. Okay, so we're ready to proceed now. So if I click next here, I can say okay. So this is uh, just giving me a couple of warnings here telling me that if uh, the SD card for these controllers um, already has uh, and is set up so that it will automatically load firmware off of the SD card, uh, that could possibly overwrite what we're about to do here. Um, so that's just a general warning that we get when we flash a processor. Okay, now this is just running through. Okay, now that uh, I've gone through and I went back and basically refreshed the firmware, uh, so I went through and installed the couple of files that were non-DMK format, uh, which brought me back out to here. I hit refresh firmware, and now I'm gonna run through this flashing process again. So uh, the new, a lot of the newer for, uh, firmware formats are gonna be in that DMK format, so wouldn't require any manual intervention, uh, but a few of the older style uh, firmware files are still out there existing, so uh, for those particular ones, you may have to do that process. Um, so as I go through here, I come through, again, the SD card uh, warnings that if there's firmware existing on that card, it will uh, overwrite what we're doing. Okay. So now it'll run through and it looks like it's going to attempt to do five at a time here. So as you can see, it's going out and actually flashing each one of these individually uh, all at the same time. So each of these five individual devices out here in my demo box. And so this uh, is going to take a little bit of time just because uh, each device is, uh, typically takes a couple of minutes. So we'll let that run through and finish up. All right, so the firmware flash is finished up. Uh, it's showing here now that five flashes were attempted, five successful. So we'll close that. And if we click Done, it brings us back out to our main page. Um, so another powerful feature here of Control Flash Plus is uh, automatic report generation that gets done every time we flash firmware. Um, so if we'd like, you can go into our settings here and under reports, it's going to generate a report each time I complete a firmware flash. So these are uh, labeled with uh, date and time format, and these are opened with Excel. So if I jump out here,
Okay, so now this is the uh, report, the flash report that we just finished, um, showing what devices were flashed. Uh, so the device name, uh, serial number associated with, with each one of those, the communication path that was used, uh, the previous revision, and then what we flashed it to, um, the file path to the firmware file that was loaded, and then the duration time that it took to flash each device, and then status over on the right. So uh, this is a really nice report just to show, um, say you flash a, a whole machine or new piece of equipment, um, just to show which, what firmware uh, that piece of equipment or those devices left with uh, when you were finished with that. So just nice way of backing that up and uh, having that to go back to if you ever needed to reference it. For more information, contact your local Warner Electric representative and be sure to check out the Warner Electric Supply YouTube channel for more videos in our automation learning series.